Let's spend some time talking about the first R of the 4R model, relationships. Take a minute and read this description of transformational leadership. You think relationships might be a big part of this? Do you see how many times relationships are brought up here in partnering? Transformational leadership is all about helping the organization become who it aspires to be. I want to make the point that everybody can be a leader. There are, of course, the big L leaders, those with the titles, the presidents, the CEOs, but there are also the little L leaders those people who are perhaps sole contributors and have no official title at all. But it's through their relationships that they have a powerful influence on the entire organization. I hope you'll be thinking about how you influence your organization through your relationships with others. Relationships is at the heart of the 4R model. To understand how relationships work, we must begin with the one doing the leading. Leadership is an expression of who we are. We lead from the inside out. And we don't lead alone. We lead others. The context of leadership is relationships. Relationships define us and they shape us. You can think of relationships as the person in the process of partnership. And it could be that as much as 60 to 70 percent of the transformational leader's effectiveness is from relationships. In the 4R model, when we're talking about relationships, we're really talking about the leader's three major relationships with God, with self, and with others. At this point, it's important to talk about the leader's heart condition. No, not his physical heart, but his very center of his being, who he is, uh, what he believes, what the values are, who he is when nobody's looking. Look at these two scripture passages. They talk about that. They talk about the heart and how everything flows out of that. All of our behavior is going to flow out of our values and our truest beliefs. So what happens when that goes bad? Well, you can think about some people who used to be in leadership positions, but now they're serving time in jail. But the implication for the organization is important, too, because organizations tend to look like their leaders. Culture, which is how we really do things around here, is often the reflection of the values of the leader of the organization. A biblical perspective on leadership affirms that a divine human partnership is the critical and foundational partnership from which all service and leadership flows. The leader's primary partnership is with the living God through his son Jesus, who transforms the leader from the inside out and gives the leader the capacity to serve as a divine agent. Transformational leadership is made possible only as the leader is caught up in a transforming partnership with Jesus. Whose we are shapes who we are and creates the capacity for relating in a transformational way. It's important, I think, to make the point that we're not talking about religion here. We're talking about relationships. Religion is about earning God's favor by doing the right things. It requires willpower and the gritting of teeth, as in, she exercises religiously. A relationship with God, though, is about transforming love, a relationship that makes us more like Jesus. And it's in the context of this relationship that we are transformed. In the Bible, in the book of Galatians, it talks about what it calls the fruit of the Spirit. Love and joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is actually a description of the character of Jesus. And it's developed in the believer uh, through this relationship. This transformation happens not by willpower, but by surrender. As God brings to mind our selfish ways, we lay them down 
and he empowers us to be more like him. So the crucial question is this, is the leader submitted to God's authority? Is the leader submitted to anyone's authority? To whom is the leader accountable? Let's talk about our relationship now with ourselves. In this diagram, there are two circles that overlap a little bit. They represent how we see ourselves and how others see us. And the part where the overlap is the congruence, where we agree and others agree with how we see ourselves. But there's a bigger part of this diagram. And what it means is, we really don't see ourselves very accurately. And that's true for most everybody. So how do we see ourselves more accurately? What can we do about it? Well, we have to rely on feedback. We get feedback from people every day. We may or may not take it, but we're getting it constantly. We can get it in a more concentrated and directed form through assessments. And that's why in this program, you'll be taking a number of assessments to help you see yourself more clearly. Well, why is that important? It's important for two reasons. One, you want to know what your strengths are, because as you develop as a leader, the, probably the most important thing you can do is to build upon your strengths. So let's get some good solid feedback as to what your strengths are. But the second reason is, you may have a fatal flaw that can derail your career and you don't even know it. You might think you're a terrific leader. The people under you might see you as Captain Bly. That can corrupt your leadership ability and end your career. That's also not a lot of fun. So let's take advantage of the assessments that we have to not only identify and build on our strengths, but identify our fatal flaws and do something about that before they derail us. Let's talk now about a leader's relationship with other people. So here's a question for you. What makes you want to follow someone? Think about a time where you willingly followed somebody. Why was that? Was it because of their honesty and transparency? Maybe it was their humility. Perhaps it was their tremendous passion and drive. Maybe they had great respect for people and great empathy. Perhaps it was just their vision. All right, now here's another question. Let's turn it around the other way. Why would someone want to follow you? What is it that you have to offer to them? Why would they want to enter into a relationship with you and follow you willingly. Perhaps you can see now why the primary leadership issue is the leader's heart condition. Because who we are leaks out. Leaders have a lot of pressure. And if you want to find out what a person is really made of, view them under pressure or stress. So, who are you? Who are you really? Who are you becoming? What do you value? And and what do you hate? What do you believe about people and organizations? I think you can see why the primary leadership issue is the leader's heart condition and why relationships is at the very heart of the 4R model. Leadership isn't easy. You know that if you've ever been in leadership. You also know that it takes a lot of capacity to lead, especially over the long run. In the 4R model, we've identified five capacities that give the leader the ability to stay with it and lead successfully, to lead transformationally over a long period of time. And we're going to refer to this configuration of capacities as DICE plus one. Let's take a look at each one of these individually for just a minute. The first capacity is called dynamic determination. Leaders can't give up. They need to be able to hang in there. Dynamic determination is the capacity to stay with it and see things through to the end until the goal is realized. Now you're going to have a separate podcast on each one of these capacities, so I'm only going to go into this briefly right now. Intellectual flexibility is what keeps us from getting locked into the past. It allows us to see things with fresh eyes to understand what's really going on in the organization, in the environment, in our marketplace, within ourselves. It allows us to see things in new and fresh ways, to spot trends, and to see what is significant, separate the wheat from the chaff. 
Characterological soundness has everything to do with integrity. It's knowing what you value, what is ethical and right, and doing it. It's sometimes called courageous character. And you can see why it would be so important for a transformational leader. Emotional maturity has everything to do with the leader's emotional hardiness and stability. It means that their issues of esteem and power and identity have mostly been settled in their life and they can process life's experiences in a healthy way, including, maybe especially, failure. It means their primary relationships are, are healthy and growing. It also includes their ability to manage stress and monitor uh, the moods not only of themselves but of others. What kind of impact are they having emotionally on the rest of the organization? The plus one capacity is partner up ability. It's the ability to engage others, to go with you, to move the organization towards a new and a better place. This has been your introduction to the first R of the 4R model relationships, and I hope you found it challenging.